Fight Connect card here. If you want to take just a moment uh, to fill those out, that would be great. The blue is a QR code. You can scan that. Um, or you can fill out the white one and drop it uh, in during the living thanks portion of the service later on. Uh, we just want to get to know you just a little bit better. Um, and if there's anything um, specific that we can be praying for you for, uh, you can go ahead and jot that down as well so that we can uh, get to know you just a little bit better. Yes, thank you for taking the time to do that. Today we're continuing in our Colossians sermon series, and we're going to talk about the ways in which Christ holds us together. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we come to worship you this day, we pray that you would help to center our scattered senses. Help us to be present in this place And at this time, that you would speak a word of refreshing into our hearts and into our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, we invite you to stand as you are able to sing our first hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, hymn number 400. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious song, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise a mountain. Fixed upon it, out of thy redeeming love. Here I praise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus, on me. Stranger wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a terror daily I'm constrained to be. Let my goodness like a fair. Standing uh, for our scripture this morning, coming from Colossians 2, 6 through 15. Since you have accepted Christ Jesus as Lord, live in union with him. Keep your roots deep in him, build your lives on him, and become stronger in your faith as you were taught. And be filled with thanksgiving. See to it then that no one enslaves you by means of worthless deceit of human wisdom which comes from the teachings handed down by human beings and from the ruling spirits of the universe and not from Christ. For the full content of, for the full content of divine nature lives in Christ in his humanity and you have been given full life in union with him. He is supreme over every spiritual ruler and authority. In union with Christ, you were circumcised not with the circumcision that is made by human beings, but with a circumcision made by Christ, which consists of being freed from the power of the sinful self. For when you were baptized, you were buried with Christ, and in baptism, you were also raised with Christ through your faith in the active power of God, who raised him from death. You were at one time spiritually dead because of your sins and because you were Gentiles without the law. But God has now brought you to life with Christ. God forgave us all our sins. He canceled the unfavorable record of our debts 
with its binding rules and did away with it completely by nailing it to the cross. And on that cross, Christ freed himself from the power of the spiritual rulers and authorities. He made a public spectacle of them by leading them as captives in his victory procession. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I grew up on the philosophy of clean your plate. Anybody else? Yes. Upon a recent Google search, that is a very harmful thing, apparently. (laughs) But I don't think so. Um, My dad was, he was not necessarily what you might call frugal, because he worked hard and he played hard, and he would spend money for fun memories. Um, But one of his greatest pet peeves was wasted food. And it still is to this day. So when we were growing up, you made sure that your eyes were not bigger than your stomach when you filled your plate, or else you were going to be sitting there for a while. And if the bananas went bad, we were making banana bread. We were not going to be tossing those bad boys out. Um, In fact, to this day, my mom has to wait until my dad is out of town to clean stuff out of the refrigerator and toss it. Sorry, Dad, if you're watching, but it's true. Sorry, mom, maybe. Maybe I should apologize to mom. Um, And my kids will attest to the fact that this trait has been passed down to me as well. And so I am a big fan of leftovers, making meals out of what I have in the pantry, and cleaning our plates. And at times my kids will complain, but mom, I'm full. Sometimes I answer with a snarky, well, you should have thought of that before you put four cups of macaroni and cheese on your plate. Um, Other times, I can empathize. I feel you, kid. I feel full, too. I am full, too. And while I have learned to moderate portions and utilize leftovers so that I don't waste food, I still find that I am left with a full plate. And it's not the dinner plate that's the problem for me. Um, Anyone else have too much on their plate? Their life plate? Yeah. I know that my plate is often overflowing and not in a good way. And it's it's like being at one of those all-you-can-eat buffets, um, but the food just keeps coming and showing up and piling up in front of you, and you feel like you have to eat it all. Uh, Sports. Camps, work, school, church, repeat. Just this endless cycle of busyness. So many activities, so little time. Um, And I think that COVID didn't help. There's this thing that they call COVID fatigue or activity fatigue that stemmed from COVID. And as a society, we kind of got used to being stuck inside and doing nothing And so when things started to open back up again and we could resume resume normal life again, all of a sudden the things that we used to do all the time are exhausting to us. Anyone else? Good. I'm glad it's not just me. Um, It's likely one of the reasons why church attendance numbers are still low and why parents are often stressed out by all of their children's activities. Our plates are just too full. And in our scripture lesson today, Paul describes a fullness of life in Christ. But I don't think that this is the type of fullness that he was referring to. In fact, I know that it isn't. Busyness does not equate to holiness. And a full plate does not equal a full life. Instead, experiencing a full life in Christ is about purpose. 
So let me show you a video to demonstrate what I mean. Um, this is a clip that stars stand-up comedian Michael Jr. And he, sometimes during, in between sets, he'll talk to folks in the audience, interview them. And so in this clip, he is talking to a person in his audience who is a music teacher. So let's watch this clip that was recently shared with our leadership board. So you're a musical director. Cool. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so um, let me get a couple Let me get a couple bars of like uh, Amazing Grace. Can you do the first part of that? Go ahead. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. That brought us in. You know what I'm saying? All right, all right. Um, now, once you give me the version, is if uh, your uncle just got out of jail, you got shot in the back when you was a kid. I'm just saying, let me see the hood version real quick. If you know which version I'm talking about, just see if that exists. Let me see what you got. to catch. The first time I asked him to sing, he knew what he was doing. The second time, he knew why he was doing it. When you know your why, your what becomes more impactful because you're walking towards or in your purpose. When you know your why, 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 I was supposed to wait before I started talking. Sorry, sound folks. <laughs> When you know your why, the purpose makes sense. The purpose for the activity in your life is more impactful. And it will affect how you act and live and feel about the things that you choose to do. And it's all about perspective. So when my plate feels full, I have to consider not just the what I am doing, but why I am doing it in order to determine whether or not I should keep doing the thing that I'm doing. So my kids left for a trip last Wednesday, and they're gone for a week. And I helped them pack. And in the process, their rooms and the entire house, let's just say, got a little bit messy. We searched for items in their closets and their drawers, and just, it was a catastrophe when they left the house. So after they left, I knew what I had to do. I had to clean up that mess. But I didn't really have to. I could have just closed the doors to their rooms and waited until they got home later this week and left that mess for them. But I chose to clean their rooms because of the why, which was to bless my kids, to show them love by giving them a clean space to come home to. The why. The purpose made this less than fun task worth it. Sometimes the why isn't worth it. Last spring, my plate was over full. In fact, it was more like I had multiple full plates that I was balancing and juggling at the same time. Braden was playing on two different baseball teams. That's a whole story. Not only that, he was also umpiring a job which I was driving him to along with all these other sports teams. 
Gigi and Maddie were both playing volleyball in a league that's 30 minutes away. On top of that, I was coaching both of their teams. I was overcommitted and I was overwhelmed. And it was on top of all the regular stuff, work, school, homework, all of that, cleaning, as if that was happening. So when I stopped to consider the why, why were we involved in so much, I realized I didn't have a good answer. It was just too much. None of these activities were bad. There were just too many of them. And without a good why to sustain me, it was, well, unsustainable. We use the same philosophy here at church. And the why is our mission statement, which says that Grace, United Methodist Church, reflects the grace of God in how we welcome, love, and serve the world and one another. So when the staff or the leadership board or any small groups are trying to make decisions about what is on our grace plate, we consider whether or not it lines up with our mission statement or whether or not it lines up with our why. So the ultimate why is to experience a life, full life in Christ. But what does that really look like? Well, I'm glad that you asked. We're going to take a quick look um, back at our scripture to help break it down a bit. So verses 6 and 7, I believe, offer the clearest picture of what it looks like to experience this fullness of life in Christ. And here is what it says. Since you have accepted Christ as Lord, live in union with him. Keep your roots deep in him, build your lives on him, and become stronger in your faith as you were taught, and be filled with thanksgiving. So based on these verses, here is what I believe we should aim to have on our plates. Next slide. I have it in front of me, so it's okay. Okay, there we go. I'm going to leave these up for a little while, by the way, because I, you know, you might want to write them down uh, on your phone, on some scratch paper, just memorize them, whatever. So these are the things that should be on our plate based on these verses. Living in union with Christ, keeping our roots deep in Christ, spending that time in Christ with Christ, building our lives on Christ when we're trying to figure out that why is it part of our life in Christ, becoming stronger in our faith through knowledge, learning, and then being filled with thanksgiving. I'll tell you, gratitude can go a really, really long way. And to be clear, these are not have-tos. These are gifts ways for us to experience that fullness of life in Christ. And so I want to give you another why. This is a why for our why, if you will. Did you like that? A why for our why, if you will. All right, so why do I think it is important for us to live in union with Christ, to keep our roots deep in Christ, to build our lives in Christ to become strong in faith, and to be filled with thanksgiving. Why is it so important to know and experience fullness of life in Christ? One reason is because, well, let's just face it, life is hard. Life is hard sometimes. Do you ever feel like your life is falling apart? Do you ever have those moments when you feel like you cannot handle one more obstacle thrown in your path. I'm going to be honest with you. I had that feeling a little earlier this summer. So as I already mentioned, I was drowning a bit before summer even got here uh, and was just waiting for mid-June so that I could take a deep breath. And I had plans to get away without the kids for a week over the 4th of July holiday. And I was so looking forward to this time away with my husband to renew and refresh. But while my kids were away, there were some things that happened that caused me great anxiety about being away from them. That was hard. 
It was really hard. And then I had a health scare that same week. I had an abnormal mammogram that turned into an abnormal ultrasound that led to the need for a biopsy that ultimately wasn't able to be scheduled until after my time away. Unfortunately, I spent several days of that vacation stressed, trying to make an appointment right before the holiday weekend, coming home early from that trip, hoping that I would have an earlier appointment that I could get a hold of them. Um, the good news is that the results were good and the findings were benign. But of course, I didn't know that at the time. All I knew was that the doctor was really, really concerned and wanted me to be seen as soon as possible. So I was away from my kids and worried and now had this cancer fear looming over me. And I've got to tell you, I lost sight of my why. I got really scared and the fear took over. I remember reaching out to Pastor Drew, who was also on vacation, and I said that I was afraid. And I told him that I thought that if I had faith, I wouldn't be afraid if something like this happened, which is an expectation that I would never have for anyone else, but that I was unfairly putting on myself. And he responded with these words. He said, everyone is afraid sometimes. The way it works is you tell people you are afraid and we keep the faith for you. We keep the faith for you. Wow. I have to tell you that assurance along with the love and care of my church family, my family family, my friends helped get me through that week of fear and worrying. And ultimately it was Christ it was Christ, the one who holds all things together, who held me together when I felt like my life was falling apart. This is the fullness of life in Christ that Paul is speaking about in Colossians. And the good news is that this gift is free. It's free and it's for all people. And so as we enter into this next few minutes, this time that we call living thanks, it's a time for you to come and pray at the altar, for you to drop off your connect cards and your offering. What I want this time for, to be for you is a time to reflect on your why and to remember the words from the song earlier that fear doesn't stand a chance when we stand in the love of God. And we experience that love in community. Verses 13 and 14 in this same chapter remind us that God loves us and God forgives all of our sins, doing, them, doing away with them completely by nailing them to the cross. That is a powerful image. By experiencing the fullness of life in Christ, we can experience freedom. Freedom from the burden of an overwhelming life. In Jesus, our sins, our failures, our shortcomings, even our fear and our doubts are destroyed. Like canceled debts nailed to the cross. May you experience the fullness of life in Christ, the one who holds all things together, even our very selves and our very lives. Amen.
Colton Rogers, the Minister of Music and Organist here at Grace, and I have the honor this morning of leading us in prayer for our church and for the world and community. And I invite you, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, to respond, hear our prayer. We start off with a, a great joy this morning that I get to introduce you to Emily Ye who is our new accompanist. Emily replaces uh, Sarah Jane Scott, who left us last summer. She does not replace Lynn. She replaces uh, Sarah Jane, but we're thrilled. She is um, a junior at Colgan High School and an incredible pianist and an incredible violist also, and it comes from a very musical family. So let's all give thanks to God that we have found an accompanist. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. I also want to lift up Betty Wade, who is suffering right now in Haymarket Hospital from the results of chemotherapy and is, is very, very ill. Please send out your prayers to the Wade and to the Schillinger family. We also keep in mind Barbara Dane who has just been moved to Lake Manassas Rehab after her major shoulder surgery and is rehabilitating there. And we also keep in mind the 27 Grace Church and Grace Church friends who head out in the next week or so for Germany, Austria, Israel, and the Danube River, where we will be celebrating the Passion Play in Germany and obviously walking in the path of Jesus in Israel. Let's lift up all of these prayers. Lord, in your mercy. Together, let us pray for the church and the world. Lord, in your mercy. Our prayer. Together, we pray for the nations and peoples of the world and their leaders. Lord, in your mercy. Together we pray for the concerns of the Prince William Manassas local community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together we pray for those who suffer and those in trouble. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together we pray for our friends, our enemies, and our families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together we pray for our own needs, which we bring to you, O God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together we pray for the forgiveness of sin and the sins of the whole world. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sin through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. So now, hear the good news. The Lord is faithful and true, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. In the name of Jesus Christ, our prayers are heard and our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now let us all join together in the prayer which the Lord Jesus Christ taught to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We now continue our worship this morning with our final hymn, The Church is One Foundation. We invite you to stand as you are able. We'll be singing the words from 546 and the tune from 545. you to sit down for a moment. We have a special slideshow we want to share with you. This week was an exciting week. Uh, We had Vacation Bible School led by our amazing Arlene Field and all of her uh, wonderful volunteers. We had over 90 kids here and over 80 volunteers. So it was a really exciting week and we wanted to share some of those highlights with you.
It's awesome. awesome. <laughs> yes, give it up. That was such a great, fun week. Um, and as you know, Arlene is retiring, and so th this week we ask you to, if you haven't had a chance yet to sign the devotions that are out in the narthex for her and Macy, please do so. Um, Arlene's last Sunday with us on staff will be next Sunday, um, as well as Macy. Arlene, as I mentioned, is retiring. Macy is going to be heading off to school, and so we will miss them dearly um, and are just so grateful for the ministry that both of them have had here. I do have an announcement to make today. We are excited that we have filled the position of Director of Children and Family Ministry, and um, that is with Anna Burrell. You may recognize Anna. She helped to direct our children's musical last spring. They've been a part of our church for about a year now, and she is um, great and so fun, and I think you guys will really enjoy getting to know her and her family better in the coming weeks and months in her new role as the Director of Children and Family Ministry, and she'll be starting very soon. And so I encourage you to, to welcome her and when you see her around campus, and also we will have some ways to do that um, in the coming month as well. I also wanted to uh, let you guys know that the book study, um, the, it's called Living Faithfully. We had a week and then last week we took off, and so if you have not um, been able to join in, it is not too late to, to sign up and get a book, and we just ask that um, you're only behind one chapter, so you would read the next chapter, so two chapters by this Wednesday, um, and you can join that group. I really enjoyed the first week, and if you, um, in our weekly e-news this past week, Pastor Drew kind of wrote a summary sharing about some of the stuff that happened in that first week. So uh, even if you're not able to be a part of the class, we encourage you to read the book, read the articles and um, information that Pastor Drew sends out. But that class is happening Wednesday mornings here on campus um, live at 1030, but it's also available via Zoom at the same time. So that's an hy a hybrid class. And then 7.30 p.m., it is a Zoom-only class, but the same, same class there. So uh, that's my announcement. Um, as one of our mission opportunities here at Grace, we've been collecting school supplies. So uh, we want to thank you all uh, for doing your part in, in helping us uh, achieve uh, that goal for us. We will be, um, if you have not brought in your uh, school supplies yet and you still would like to, you have one more day. You can do so by uh, tomorrow. If you want to bring it by the church office, you can do so between uh, 9 and 2. So just come on by the church office and drop those off if you still have some. Grace abounds. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Um, and one final announcement, we are still collecting uh, plastic grocery bags. Um, if you have, we all have too many uh, in, that, in that cabinet, uh, <laughs> or a bag full of bags. So if you have those, uh, we are collecting those. We'll be donating to the St. Thomas, Manassas St. Thomas uh, food shelter, and they will be going to a good cause uh, there. Yes, amen for that. That bag bag, that's what I have. It's in a cabinet and full of bags. All right, receive now this benediction. I invite you to stand as you are able. Now, may we all go forth from this place knowing our why and experiencing that fullness of life in Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.